Hello, Portland. Can you guys hear me? Hello, and hello everyone streaming. I know a few of you. Have you had your coffee? Are you ready? All right, good. So since you're already settled in your seats, I want you to lean in. Because today, I get to tell you a secret. And it's a secret that's been well kept for almost 30 years. And I want to start by sharing with you a quick story about a revolutionary named Jill. So let's watch. Hello, my name is Jill, and I have Parkinson's disease. I've taken my Parkinson prescription medication this morning, and this is how it helps, and it doesn't. This is my oil, cannabis oil, and I'm just going to spread it on the biscuit like that. It's been 20 minutes since I've had that butter in the biscuit, and I feel wonderful. No shakes, no rush. All right, so we're all happy Jill got better, right? But you're probably wondering how is that possible? How is it possible that her well-researched, FDA-approved drugs aren't working for her, but something else is? It's because there's a secret system in your body that no one, like no one, is talking about. Now we know these systems really well, right? They're taught in every health anatomy and physiology class between elementary and high school and medical school. Do you guys know these? Yeah, we have our circulatory and our pulmonary systems, our skeletal and muscular systems just to name a few. And we all know about our nervous system, which we once thought controlled them all. But today I'm going to talk to you about this system. It's a system totally unlike, supreme to, and in control of all the rest. And it was completely left out of every single medical textbook I read, despite its discovery 27 years ago. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm not making this up. This is for real. So since it's not in the textbook, I'm going to share it with you today. I'm going to share with you the real science and the real history of this system and how you can use it to take control of your health. But before I do, I want to share my story. So when I was a kid, I wanted to become a doctor like my parents. But as medical school approached and my parents reflected on the changing medical field, my mom encouraged me to do something different with medicine. So I pursued a dual degree in medicine and business to become a doctor entrepreneur because we entrepreneurs believe we can change the world with our ideas, and I wanted to become a world-changing doctor. Can't you tell? <laughs> yes, with that notion, I was eager and energized to learn. But what I learned deflated me. Because for me, the salient lesson from medical and business school was that big medicine is a big bureaucracy and paradoxical to health. It was a heavy, really weighty ethical dilemma that forced me to confront the dichotomy between wanting to become a healer but becoming a drug pusher. I was training into a system pretty blasé and disinterested in addressing the root cause of disease and driven by patent medicine. This is not what I signed up for. And I was this close, literally, from walking away from medicine. But I found a family medicine program with an integrative medicine track and that provided me a lens into ancient healing practices. Now, we benefit tremendously from the advancing technologies and innovations of today's medicine. But what I found was that people used to be great at healing themselves and others, in doing so with natural substances and simple practices, like herbs and acupuncture and yoga and meditation and more. This wasn't witchcraft or voodoo, right? It's not, it wasn't then and it's not today. These healers knew what worked and they had sound theories as to why. They just lacked the science. They lacked a biophysical model demonstrating how. And it was hidden in the secret system all along. Are you guys ready to know what it is? <laughs> all right, so we're going to start with a word clue. Can anybody pronounce this word? Okay, okay, well, let's, let's, let's do it together. So for the benefit of the group, let's sound it out. Ready? Endo, can, nab, noi. Endo, can, nab, noi. Endo, can. Louder, Portland. Endo, can, nab, noi. Endo, can. <laughs> Masterful. <laughs> yes, thank you. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this secret system is what's known 
as the endocannabinoid system, or ECS for short, so if I say that, you know what I mean. And now we get to really nerd out as I explain what it is and how it works. So the endocannabinoid system resides within all animals except the insect. It's a 600 million year old messenger and receptor system integral to homeostasis or the management of balance within your body. From embryonic development to immunosurveillance, there is not a single function in your bodies that is not somehow influenced or modulated by the ECS. You can think of it as a switchboard, functioning in and across all physiologic processes and organs, acting and reacting to internal and external stimuli to direct, correct, and overall manage your health. Now, although a gross simplification, the endocannabinoid system can be broken down into four core components. First up, we have the cannabinoid receptors, like CB1 and CB2 and counting. Next, we have the ligands that bind to those receptors and initiate an action called endocannabinoids, or body-made cannabinoids, like anandamide and 2-AG. And we have the synthesizing enzymes that make these endocannabinoids on demand when they're needed, and the degradative enzymes that break them down after they're used. And it works through something called retrograde signaling. So illustrated in this diagram is the route of an endocannabinoid that's made in a postsynaptic neuron in response to neurotransmitter stimulation. It then travels backwards or retrograde across the synapse, where it binds to a, a cannabinoid receptor on the presynaptic membrane to initiate an action, in this case, blocking the release of neurotransmitter. So let me break it down a little bit simpler, it's an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's say the endocannabinoid system is your dormitory or your apartment building, and your neighbor across the hall is making a lot of noise, and they're getting really loud. You just walk across the hall, and you politely ask them to turn the volume down. So you can imagine how important this function is when cells are sending signals of stress, pain, or inflammation. Like your noisy neighbor, these processes need to be checked. And it's through this mechanism that the endocannabinoid system checks these processes back into balance so that your body can relax, remember to eat, fall asleep, forget traumatic experiences, and protect itself along with a host of other mediating and restorative processes. The endocannabinoid system keeps your body in balance. Now, up to now, you guys probably thought the brain was the boss, right? We all did. But the brain's not the boss. The endocannabinoid system is. And we had it wrong. So with all that said, you guys might be confused why this really awesome system was kept secret for so long. Well, I'd say that it probably has something to do with the plant that they used to discover it. So back in the 80s, researchers wanted to know how THC worked. And THC is a plant-made cannabinoid, or phytocannabinoid, found in cannabis. And it's responsible for the intoxicating and euphorogenic properties that cannabis is so infamous for. And using radio tag THC, the endocannabinoid system was discovered as THC locked into and unveiled this extensive receptor network concentrated throughout the brain and throughout the rest of the body. And THC did this because they found out it's a direct analog or mimicker of our own endocannabinoid anandamide. And as an aside, anandamide, also known as the bliss molecule, is what's really responsible for the runner's high, not endorphins, right? So if you, any of you have ever experienced the euphoria that's come with exercising, that's your endocannabinoid system, that's anandamide. And we're finding more each day about over 100 other phytocannabinoids found in cannabis and other plants that mimic our endocannabinoids and have the potential to supplement or, meet or modulate the endocannabinoid system in therapeutic and healing ways. So this is where we're at. We have this incredibly mind-blowing system, and we have this plant, y'all, a plant, that works on this system in therapeutic and healing ways. So what I really hope you're wondering right now is what's wrong with that. All right, well, the answer lies within the annals of American medical history, starting with two guys who really wanted to sell a lot of prescription drugs. And in their heyday at the turn of the 20th century, American medicine was based on homeopathy and herbal medicine, and naturopaths and chiropractors weren't getting down with patent drugs. So with the millions of dollars in their pocketbook, a document called the Flexner Report, and the full force of state governments, American medical training was consolidated and standardized in accordance with pharmaceutical drug science to the exclusion of holistic care practices, natural substances and remedies, and natural cures. And this created a system that made patentable pharmaceutical drugs that treated symptoms easy to sell, 
and that made natural holistic caring practices and unpatentable plant medicine like cannabis fringe, quackery, and illegal. What's surprising the most is that U.S. physicians prescribed cannabis routinely to their patients well into the 20th century. Cannabis was once a top three most commonly prescribed medicines, dwindling out of use due to heavy taxation, the prosecution of the doctors who prescribed it, and finally, it being written out of the American Pharmacopoeia in 1942. You see, big business wrote my textbook. And I can only speculate that the endocannabinoid system was kept secret for so long because its science validated the use of unpatentable plant medicine like cannabis and other natural practices. But the pharmaceutical industry wasn't the only big business disrupting the once-free market of health. We Americans spend multiples of billions of dollars annually on unhealthy and low-quality foods, in addition to the prescription drugs we reflexively depend upon, both of which are directly linked to endocannabinoid system dysfunction, which we now know is the precipitant to most chronic diseases. And as a result, Americans are getting sicker and sicker, riding round and round on a Ferris wheel of big interests that we pay to ride. That doesn't make any sense. We're outsourcing the responsibility of our health to the bigs, and they're cashing in at our expense. Staying on this ride is a losing battle. But this can be the past if we reimagine our future. And in this future, all we need is love. Yeah. <laughs> but the type of love that I'm talking about is self-love. Because in the battle with the bigs, self-love is the revolution of one. Not until we start taking good care of ourselves do we opt out of the big business of disease. And the revolution of one is you choosing to live in balance, and the endocannabinoid system is your on-ramp. Now, as powerful and resilient as the endocannabinoid system is, it is not immune to aging or the assaults of modern living, like those unhealthy foods, and chronic use of prescription drugs, environmental pollutants and toxins, emotional stress, and how all of those things interplay on our genetics. Now, I just listed the top five contributors to ECS dysfunction and disease, and they should be avoided. But caring for yourself and your endocannabinoid system requires a bit of understanding of what nurtures it and what restores it. And here are your tools. Eat real food because it provides the body with what it needs for healthy cells and the raw materials for building those endocannabinoids. Supplement with adaptogenic uh, herbs and spices, because it's, they soothe and tone the endocannabinoid system, aiding in balance restoration. Detox, because it cleanses the body. It reduces inflammation and rids it of harmful toxins that, that abet endocannabinoid system dysfunction. Incorporate phytocannabinoids and cannabimimetic practices. Phytocannabinoids like CBD and THC, when taken as whole plant cannabis, have shown helpful in diseases of endocannabinoid system dysfunction and wellness overall. And cannabimimetic practices, I know that's another fancy word, like sleeping and exercise, yoga and meditation, deep breathing and prayer, soothe and tone the endocannabinoid system as though they were supplements themselves. And lastly, maintain healthy relationships the effects of personal relationships across work, home, your social settings affect endocannabinoid system tone. And y'all create reasons to smile and hug often, because as it turns out, smiling and hugging part and parcel with healthy relationships triggers the release of your endocannabinoid anandamide, the bliss molecule. Now, as we're nearing the end of my talk, I know I've given you a mouthful of information, and it might be a little overwhelming, but I really hoped it piqued your curiosity and maybe sparked some inspiration, as it did for me. And I and my family have been so compelled by the physiology of the endocannabinoid system and the care it requires that we're pioneering the nascent fields of endocannabinology and cannabinoid medicine with many other scientists and clinicians worldwide. This is our calling. And affecting systemic change with this system is what gets us up and going every morning, and we're not going to stop until this information is in the textbook. Are you with me, Portland? Right? I mean, this is life-changing information. Yes. So I encourage us all to learn from our past and reimagine our future with this system, because the secret 
to balanced health resides in the science and total care of the endocannabinoid system. And I can tell you, like we tell our patients, that getting started is a lot simpler than you think. You just have to choose one. And you too can be a revolutionary like Jill. Thank you.